Hello and welcome to MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic. In this video, we are going to update and upgrade our Ramos Dragon Engine EDH deck. What's going on, MTGBC? Welcome, MTG Burgeoning community. Here we are with another installment of the Up and Up series. This time we're going to update and upgrade Ramos Dragon Engine. It's inching closer and closer to admittance into the Burgeoning Commander catalog. Here we have one goal in mind. Well, one big goal and one small subset goal. The first goal of these revisions speed. We must be faster. We have to ramp quicker. We have to get lands onto the battlefield. We have to get Ramos out quicker. We need to be faster. That's primary goal number one. Our secondary goal is swapping out a couple of spells that haven't been as effective as they might seem for a couple of other spells that should do a much better job. So, let's start getting faster by putting in some cards and some spells. Putting in some cards are all going to be cards. By including some spells that are going to speed things up. We're going to start with a pair of cards that do the exact same thing. Three Visits and Nature's Lore. One in a green mana. We're going to search our library for a Force card. We're going to put that card onto the battlefield. And then we're going to Shuffle. A turn one or turn two or any er early turn three visits or nature's lore should put a triome onto the battlefield as soon as possible. We want to make sure that we have our mana fixed and we want to make sure we have abundant mana to do so so that we can get Ramos into play, start casting those multicolored spells and get some plus one plus one counters onto our general. With three visits and nature's lore going in, Farseek is not far behind. This lets us search our library for a plains, an island, a swamp, or a mountain card, and put that onto the battlefield tapped. We then shuffle our library. Note that each of these three preceding spells do not limit us to basic lands. We're looking for basic land type lands. They do not have to be basic. So your, your original dual lands, your shock lands, and your triumph are all going to be fair game with those three spells. A great way to power Ramos onto the battlefield as quickly as possible is an early turn mana crypt. We all know what this artifact can do. We just have to be mindful of our life total because we don't want to be the player that loses to their own mana crypt. And we could very well incur a great number of three-point damage effects if we are losing those upkeep trigger coin flips. All right, for the purposes of fixing our mana and making it a lot more difficult to interact, more on that to come, we are going to play with a copy of Prismatic Omen. This is an enchantment for one on a green mana. Lands we control are every basic land type in addition to their other types. With this enchantment on the battlefield, and I stress the word enchantment because enchantments are a little more difficult to remove from the battlefield than artifacts. Again, more on that to come. With Prismatic Omen on our side of the battlefield, every one of our lands is a command tower, and each one is going to tap for one mana of any color color. Those are the five cards that we are putting in to speed things up when it comes to Ramos, and these are the five cards that are coming out so that we can do so. The first one is Sky Shroud Claim. Yes, it is a double of what three visits or nature's lore is because it lets us search for two forest cards instead of one, but that mana value of three and a green, mm -mm. I want to cast these spells sooner. I want to cast this spell on turn one, maybe turn two if I have to wait. I don't want to be waiting until turn four or five or even later to cast a Sky, a sky Shroud Claim. I want it quicker. It has to be faster. We've got to get Ramos out there onto the battlefield and start casting those spells as soon as possible and replacing Sky Sky Shroud Claim with three visits allows us to do so. 
Nature's Lore is going in to replace Thalwar Stone. Now, we're playing a five-color deck, so it seems very reasonable that Thalwar Stone will be able to de deliver us some form of color fixing for the purposes of casting our multicolor spells. That's not the reason why it's coming out. The reason why this is being replaced by a ramp spell is that from a certain perspective, roots are going to be stronger than rocks here. The two mana that we invest in, Nature's Lore, is going to put a land onto the battlefield, which, historically, is much more difficult to remove than a two mana artifact, or any mana artifact for that matter. So for the same mana value of two, we get a land on our side of the battlefield versus a uh, mana rock. So that is the reason why Thalwar Stone is coming out in favor of Nature's Lore. Now, as we were revising this deck for this particular episode of the Up and Up series, it became apparent to me that we did not need to have 40 or 39 lands. I think we had 39 lands in this build. That's too many lands. So we're going to take a couple of the lands out for the purposes of thinning the lands in the deck, putting more mana ramp spells in, like Nature's Lore, Far Seek, Three Visits, and then getting more of those lands out, out of the library into the graveyard, I'm sorry, out of the library and into play, will help us draw more non-land cards throughout the game. This deck doesn't need 39 lands, so two lands are coming out. One of them is going to be Forbidden Orchard. This does tap for one mana of any color, but as whenever we tap this, we do put a 1-1 one, one colorless spirit onto the battlefield of an opponent. And even though it doesn't have evasion and it doesn't fly, which I still don't know why a spirit doesn't fly, but whatever. <laughs> That's another conversation for another time. It is still a nuisance. I mean, let's be honest. This is not a creature-heavy deck. We only have, I think, a handful, two, three, maybe four creatures outside of Ramos, and anything that's going to give our opponents anything that can attack us, we need to frown upon that. It's not as if we're going to have all of these multitude of blockers, particularly with the next card that's going to come out, so having Forbidden Orchard come out in place of, let's say, Mana Crypt is going to help us to accelerate Ramos onto the battlefield and pay any potential commander tax with Mana Crypt versus tapping for one mana of any color and giving our opponent an attacker. The next land that's coming out is going to be Field of the Dead. Oh, shoot, that's the wrong one. <laughs> All right, so this was the proxy version of Field of the Dead. So I forgot to grab one from the... I do have it. I forgot I pulled it for another deck. Okay, so Field of the Dead is here. We all know what that does. Uh, it enters the battlefield tapped, um, taps for a colorless, and whenever it or another land enters the battlefield under our control, if we have seven or more lands with different names, we create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. So what we're doing here with Field of the Dead, I can't believe I forgot to swap that out. Jeez, it's a little bit of an embarrassment, but I'm not going back now. I own the card. Check the other videos. So what we're doing here with taking out Field of the Dead for, um, for pu putting Mana Crypt in its spot is, or Mana Crypt or Farseeker, any one of the other cards, what we're doing here is this is not a dedicated token build. This is not a dedicated graveyard recursion build, and these are builds in which Field of the Dead thrives. We're not having any additional token generating spells like Doubling Seizing, Parallel Lives, or Anointed Procession. We're not doing any of those things, so what we're really doing is hoping for some peripheral token creation just by playing a spell i'm sorry just by putting a land into play and that's really it we're not really accentuating that delivery process in any way we're really just having a land in there that's going to occasionally make a token for us that's not the scope of this build and honestly any one of these cards to the right of ramos is going to do a lot more heavy lifting in this deck and the engine that this deck has than field of the dead ever could and we're back, and through the power of editing and not feeling ashamed anymore, Field of the Dead returns the actual version. All right, card number five that is coming out as a replacement for, I'm sorry, as um, to make way for one of these five cards here, this is definitely a card for card swap. As I was alluding to earlier, with Prismatic Omen being an enchantment, and enchantments having a little more staying power on the battlefield, secondary to artifacts, Prismatic Omens going in to replace Chromatic Lantern. Chromatic Lantern does what Prismatic Omen does for our lands, but this could also tap to add one mana of any mana to our or one mana of any color to our mana pool. 
It costs one more mana to cast. Granted, it is just three colorless mana. Prismatic Omen is just one in a green. And again, if you've played with Chromatic Lantern and you've had that shattered or, you know, it was on the battlefield when an opponent overloaded a um, Vandal Blast, well, you just lost all of the mana fixing for your lands, but that doesn't happen with Prismatic Omen. So the Omen is going in to do what Chromatic Lantern does, and it's going to do it even better. All right, we got two cards left going in. All right, so the first card going coming out is going to be Meeting of the Five. Now, when this card was first spoiled from the streets of New Capenna, I was like, oh, this is going to be such an awesome card for this build. Three in Wooberg colors. We exile the top ten cards of our library. We may cast spells with exactly three colors from among them this turn. We can add double Wooberg to our mana pool, which we can only spend the cast spells with exactly three colors. I was like, oh, this card is going to go and it's going to be great. <sighs> well, let me tell you. If, if this Ramos deck were a was a dedic if this Ramos deck were a dedicated Lucky Charms deck where we had 30, 40 charms, then this card would be absolute money. But that's not what we're looking at here. We have a lot of cards that are not three colors, and meeting of the five is not good enough to justify its eight mana value. Even though we get 10 back. Trust me, we're not getting enough cards that are exactly three colors to make any use of that mana. So meeting of the five, you are coming out. You are going to yield to Unite the Coalition. Two in Wooberg mana. We have an instant here. We pick five of the following modes, and we may choose the same mode more than once. Target permanent phases out. That gives us protection or other kinds of protection. Either we protect Ramos or we phase out an opponent or we phase out one of our opponent's permanents. Target player draws a card. We exile target player's graveyard. Unite the coalition deals two damage to any target and we dis- or we destroy target artifact or enchantment. Very, very relevant abilities on this instant. And note if we slide this instant to the left, if we take those five plus one plus one counters off of Ramos, we get that double Wooberg mana. We get cast, unite the coalition and still have three mana left. This instant is going to do so much more for us than meeting of the five could. And it's one generic mana less. All right, next coming up, coming out, I should say, the last of our revisions for this video. Coming out, it's going to be Progenitus. Double Wooberg mana here for a 10-10 with protection from everything. If Progenitus would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, we reveal it and shuffle it into our library instead. Yeah, we can take those same plus one plus one counters off of Ramos for the double Wooberg mana and get a 10-10 with protection from everything. But we have to wait to use it. We don't get to turn it sideways until the beginning of our next or until our next turn comes, which although it has protection from everything, magic these days has a has a lot of spells that can actually interact with something like progenitus. So for something that's a little more impactful on the board state, progenitus is gonna come out for cruel ultimatum. Now here we have a sorcery for two blue, three black, and two red. And yes, this is only going to target one opponent, but boy oh boy is it going to target that opponent hard. Target an opponent will sacrifice a creature, discard three cards, and lose five life. We return a creature card from our graveyard to our hand, we draw three cards, and we gain five life. Granted, the returning the creature card from our graveyard to our hand might be a whiff because of the limited number of creatures we have in this deck, but the three cards and gaining five life, this is a six card swap and a 10 life swing, a 10 point life swing between us and an opponent. Cruel Ultimatum is going to do more in the overall game than turning Progenitus sideways to deal 10 points of damage after spending 10 mana to cast it. All right, there you have it, MTGBC. Some revisions to our Ramos Dragon Engine EDH deck. Let me know your thoughts about these revisions and our actual Field of the Dead in the comment section below. This is MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic.